So I'm like knee deep in my $1,000 day trading challenge video. And until that video comes out, I thought I'd reach out to you guys and ask you what you want to know. So I gathered all of the responses from Instagram. So if you want to take part in my future Q&A videos, make sure you're following me on Instagram. All right, first question. How to not feel hopeless when attempts to make money keep failing? Well, as you can see from the videos that I put out, I am still failing to this day and I have most of my experiments fail. So don't feel bad. And I think the, the key is to find something that you actually enjoy doing. If it's YouTube videos, um, well, I enjoy making YouTube videos about photography. So when I was doing it for like six months and not making any money, it was fine because it was fun to make, you know? So find something that you're actually passionate about and then figure out a way to build an audience around it or build a business model that will help you start to bring in some revenue. Next question, gaining new clients when essentially starting from zero clients. Well, it depends on what your business is, but it's usually easiest to reach out to your existing network of friends and family to become your first customers. And even if it's something that they don't pay you for, or they pay you less than you normally charge someone, you generally need to start somewhere. Mixing family and business is a beautiful thing. So when we started doing photography, it was family members that we shot, friends of family members that we shot. And then word starts to spread, you know, they can share the photos online on social media, and then people wanna know, well, who shot those photos? And the same goes with any other business. You have to start somewhere, and even if you have to start for free, I think that's okay to build up your portfolio, to start word of mouth spreading about the work that you do. Just make sure that you do a good job. Next question. On average, how many hours per day of prep work do you do to trade stocks? Well, I wake up about 45 minutes before the market opens, which here in California, it's like 5.45 in the morning. And so I spend that time leading up to market open at 6.30, uh, catching up on the pre-market and after hours action, marking out my levels and kind of developing a plan for the day. After trading is over, I'll look over my charts, I'll look over my entries and exits for the day and uh, kind of journal my trades. And then uh, before I go to bed, I'll also check in, see what um, has happened after hours. All in all, probably, um, an hour and a half per day of non-trading um, prep work. Next question. Time management and all your business ventures. Like seriously, how do you do it all, man? All right, well, um, I covered a lot of it in my how I spend my day to maximize productivity video. Kind of covers my breakdown of kind of hour by hour almost. Um, but I do wake up early and I usually wake up early to trade stocks. Otherwise, I'd probably sleep in a little bit more. I uh, spend like the, the first half of my morning focusing on the market. And then after that, I kind of tackle any video work that I need to do, whether that's for my main channel, Mango Street, for this channel, if it's scripting out new videos, um, uploading files, editing photos, whatever it is, I kind of trickle that in in mid-morning. And then uh, after the market's closed, I can focus uh, kind of completely on the YouTube channels because those kind of those are what brings in the most amount of money for the business and uh, kind of prioritize everything from there. So one thing that I enjoy about what I do is that no one day is really exactly the same because it kind of depends on what experiments I have going on, what I'm interested in that week, what I'm focusing on. Sometimes I have a trading challenge, sometimes it's NFTs, sometimes it's uh, some other print on demand side hustle or something like that. So it kind of just depends on what I have going on in the background and that's where I'll divvy up my time. It's kind of fun um, and kind of uh, works well with my personality. So I get fascinated by a lot of different things and luckily I can take the time to dive into each thing I'm fascinated by because I have this channel that kind of helps pay for all of that. Next question. It's generic, but do you have any advice for someone wanting to get started on YouTube? I do. I, don't, I think I did make a video about this. You have to give people a reason to subscribe to you to watch your videos instead of someone else. So. Ideally, you have something unique that you can bring to the table, whether it's your point of view, the information that you have, your entertainment value, the style of video editing you do, all that kind of can create um, an audience based off of uh, what you do differently. So with Mango Street, our goal was to create really short to the point tutorials and not ramble on for a long time. For this channel, I wanted to create videos about personal finance, making money online that didn't have some ulterior motive of like trying to sell you a course or use affiliate links like I have some of that stuff, I don't have a course, but um, the AdSense is enough where I don't need to sell anything in addition 
to just you watching the video. So I don't really have a bias in terms of, um, I want you to be sold on dropshipping because I have a course to sell you. It's not like that. I'm kind of approaching it as um, kind of the average person's approach to making money online. And so I think that's kind of my unique differential for this channel. So find something unique that you can do and then execute it to the best of your ability and make sure you're passionate about it because that'll help keep things going when times get tough. Do your dogs attract more income than you? Well, they're definitely cuter than me, so when it comes to stock photography, they definitely bring in more revenue, but that's about the extent of what they generate for us. Okay, favorite hustle experiment so far? I've done quite a few, they've all been pretty fun. I liked the video I did where I tried to earn the cost of a Peloton by trading Peloton stock options. <laughs> that was uh, really fun because, of, spoiler alert, it worked out for me. Um, I also enjoyed my day trading with a thousand dollars one, even though the second half of that wasn't as fun. I actually got really frustrated with it, um, but I still had fun with it. And um, I always kind of enjoy a print on demand one, even though I think it's really tricky and I haven't really yet figured it out, but I always have fun giving it a shot. More music stuff, please. Um, I mean, I love doing music stuff. I think it's a little, it's a different niche than kind of what people subscribe to for this channel. So I don't want to do a lot of music stuff for people who really didn't subscribe for that. You like music, I like music, Maroon 5. And if I made like a third channel just about music stuff, I think that'd be too much. And I don't want it to like suck the fun out of making music because right now that's kind of something I can do without worrying about uh, the YouTube side of things. And so I kind of want to leave that alone. But I'm glad, glad that you like music stuff. All right, another question. This is photography. Which lens is good for night creative portrait and long exposure with cars? Uh, Kind of a niche question because I mean, I'm sure there's just a smaller section of you that care about photography, but if you have a full frame sensor camera, maybe a 16 to 35 millimeter is a pretty good versatile lens for something like that. So check that out. Would you ever quit YouTube and just live off trading and chilling? Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me, honestly. YouTube's fun, but uh, you know, sometimes it's less fun. <laughs> so if I, um, could just live off trading and chilling. I think that would be pretty ideal. I do like making YouTube videos when I can kind of do it at my own pace. So the ultimate goal would just be kind of like self-sufficient, not need to rely on social media or anything like that to make a living because it can be kind of draining at times. Okay, next. What is the most easily accessible passive income stream? Um, this is a tough one because passive income is honestly, it's pretty hard. And it kind of also depends on your skill set how much time you have to devote to it, follow what you're passionate about, if you can see a way to make money off of it, if that's your goal. So find something that there's like a community around that maybe you're a part of and figure out a way where you can contribute to that community. And then eventually, you know, you could start to earn passive income from it. But really, I think most forms are pretty difficult and will take a lot of time and or money in order to get that going. Next question is how much should you have in your stock account before you start trading options? And again, this kind of all depends. It depends on uh, your risk tolerance. It depends on how much money you make. For me, I started with $1,500 and I, I did it at the right time and I got a little bit of lucky. So it's hard for me to kind of give advice in that uh, arena, but um, you really should have money saved up that you're okay if you lose the entirety of it. Um, and also paper trade with stock options first, get a hang of it and make sure that you can kind of be profitable before you start putting in harder money into something risky like stock options because it is quite tricky and it can wipe out your account really fast. All right, it's getting a little uh, dark out, so uh, time to move into the studio. We did it, we did it! It looks amazing! Look at that! Where did you first grow your initial following? Well, back in 2014, Rachel and I were made uh, suggested users on Instagram which is where the staff would pick accounts that they think are worth following. So, you know, we would get like, you know, hundreds of followers a day for a week or two. And so that kind of exploded our Instagram accounts to 50 and 60,000 followers. That's like double your Instagram followers. But those followers weren't the most engaged and, you know, they didn't really interact with your posts that often. So it wasn't really all it was cracked up to be. My account is private, thanks. So then in 2017, we started our YouTube channel you know, maybe we had a, a few hundred people follow us over from Instagram, but really it was just all organic growth on YouTube, which is kind of, the, it's the perfect platform for organic growth because it's such a massive search engine. So it kind of all just grew from there. Next question, how long does it take 
to make your average video. My average videos kind of can vary so much. It could be like a two week challenge, you know, doing print on demand or trading or something like that. And that will take me 60 hours or something like that. Whereas um, something that's more kind of straightforward, kind of more of an educational one, that maybe will take me a few hours to write, 20 minutes to film. And then um, editing is usually, I would say a six to eight hour thing, but we've hired an editor now who handles all of that. Guys, meet your new editor. Will you do any more NFT drops? That's a good question. I'm not sure. We have an idea to partner with another artist. It's a 3D artist this time. So we may do another set of animated photos, but um, we'll have to see. Just wondering, will you and Rachel ever share when slash why you moved and where to? I think I did in um, the video about why I'm leaving California, kind of gave some reasons, I, I believe, as to um, why we're moving out of California and uh, we were moving to Illinois. We lived in Chicago before we moved out to California, so we're kind of moving back to the Midwest, which is where we're both from. We have family in Indiana, and so we'll just kind of be closer to family and friends and more affordable real estate, things like that. And uh, our house is currently under renovations, and so we'll be probably moving back around March to Illinois for good. Can we get a small trading group going just for camaraderie and discussion? To be honest, I'm already in a few trading groups where I'm not an admin or a mod or anything like that. I'm just watching, listening, learning, and um, I don't really have the capacity to have like another Discord server where, you know, I'm kind of a mod or admin of. It's a lot of responsibility and I just don't really have time for it right now. Maybe on down the line, we'll see. <laughs> Got a couple questions about the new Taylor Swift re-recording of Red. It's my favorite album of hers. I've listened to it. I love it. It's great, especially the 10 minute version of uh, All Too Well. So yeah, big fan. Not ashamed to admit it. Crypto day trading. As I touched on in my crypto video I put out last week, I haven't really found a good way to trade crypto intraday without getting hit by a ton of fees. And here in the US, it's hard to use any meaningful leverage. So until I kind of have a, a way to do that where it makes sense, I probably won't do it. You really just have to find like an altcoin that pops off just in time. I think to really see a lot from it day trading wise. How do you juggle your mental health and creating content slash running a business? Very good question. Um, I haven't really figured it out because it really takes a toll sometimes. I go through rough patches where I really don't want to make a video, don't feel like I can make a video. Sometimes I take a break, sometimes I don't post and you know, I don't put the pressure on myself to feel like I have to post every week because at the end of the day, I'm just making YouTube videos. I'm not curing cancer or anything like that. It's very small stakes. And um, even if, if my channel suffers from it, uh, my mental health benefits from it. So I'm trying to find the right balance of working hard without it wearing me down mentally too much. But good question. It's, it's really tricky to figure out. How to invest with a nine to five income? It's a great question. I would recommend um, budgeting. Budget solution number 28. Use grazing sheep to mow grass. So figuring out where your money's going every month and then figuring out what you have left over at the end of the month and then divvy that up based off um, your personal goals. So maybe you need to have an emergency fund and then once you have that filled up, maybe you wanna start investing in the stock market. So for my like long-term investing, I use M1 Finance because it's just super simple and I have a recurring uh, deposit there monthly. And then I have that divvied up into just a few things. So I have a few ETFs. I have uh, some Amazon, Apple, but um, I keep it very simple and um, I just let it go to work for me and I don't worry too much about it. I don't check it every day. I just let the returns start to compound and um, I just don't worry about it. Well, I got a lot of uh, NFT questions. <laughs> I feel like I've explained them pretty well, but getting started wise, it's kind of tricky. I would just start searching NFT on Twitter, find accounts that seem like they're interesting, seem like you can learn from. And then um, there's a Discord for like every single project. So it's maybe finding a project that you like, that you think has some potential. Go ahead and join a bunch of Discords and just start to filter them out by, you know, what has a lot of activity, what has an engaged community behind it, and then leave all the other ones that aren't really providing any value to you. Read and learn as much as you can, watch as many videos as you can about it if you're interested in it and then um, maybe start collecting or creating for yourself. Merch by Amazon Experiment, Redbubble Experiment. I did do one Redbubble Experiment. Um, that actually went pretty well. Merch by Amazon I haven't tried yet. Um, and I think just with all prints on demand, it comes down to finding the right niche, the right designs, and then reaching those potential customers. I've tried several different print on demand experiments and it's still a little tricky. There's a lot of competition out there. So if you have 
graphic design ability, definitely explore it further because I'm sure you'll get a lot farther than I have. Drop shipping. Yeah, I've been trying to do drop shipping. <laughs> I started um, like a year ago. Facebook just rejected all my um, attempts at advertising. I kind of just dropped it. You don't need to drop it, okay? I know I should probably look at some influencer marketing. I don't love it, honestly. I just, I don't really think it's like an awesome business model. Um, kind of just a middleman and usually the quality products isn't so high so I'll try to do one for the channel it's just um, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult I'll tell you that much what's your favorite source of income that you have hmm that's a good question I think um, on Mango Street we sell Lightroom photo editing presets real quick I want to amend my answer I was thinking about this and my favorite way to make money is actually uh, from music licensing so uh, the music I make, I put on art lists that people can put in their videos, and I always have a lot of fun doing it. It's something I would do for free, even if I didn't get paid. And uh, it's literally like almost every part of the process I enjoy doing, it never feels like work. So making music for licensing is definitely my favorite way to make money. What's your best advice for new traders? Don't worry so much about everyone else's impressive profit and losses that they like post on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and really um, just focus on your own path and really try to learn from as many people, as many sources as possible. I spent so much time my first year really diving into it, just watching so many videos, video after video after video, and learning as much as possible. And then it really comes down to screen time, watching it throughout the day if you're able to, see how stocks react to different uh, events, different news, different technical analysis levels. There's so much to learn and it can seem overwhelming, so try to simplify things, maybe just focus on SPY and QQQ and some basic maybe ETFs first, watch how they move, break it down into a few select stocks that you really like, focus on those, get really comfortable with how those move, and then start paper trading. Top three things you wish you knew when you were 20. Oh man, so much. I would tell myself to learn the stock market. Um, I was kind of turned off by it, you know, at first because I could never really find good information. There wasn't so much on YouTube back when I was 20 years old as there is now. It was way less developed in that realm. And so I would really try to start investing sooner. You know what I would tell myself? I would tell myself, buy Bitcoin. <laughs> buy all of it that you can because, um, well, if I held it until now, I would be a multi-billionaire. Hundred billion dollars. What's your advice for someone who wants to start a passive income but is on a full-time job? Well, my advice is to make the most of your free time. So, you know, it's very easy to like binge something on Netflix at the end of the night. Instead, you kind of have to get up off the couch and start planning out whatever it is that you wanna do. If you wanna become a trader, you have gotta start looking at charts at night. If you want to um, start a YouTube channel, well, you gotta really plan out your video topics, what's gonna help them stand out from everyone else's, things like that. You can start scripting out videos, outlining things. You just need to make sure you're spending your free time doing that. Like, we're not going out and clubbing all the time. We are kinda of at home focusing on our business, but you kind of have to make those sacrifices early on in order to get uh, the ball rolling. So you really just have to make sure you manage your time wisely. BDSM, that means uh, buy dip some more. Yeah, BDSM. How to manage mental stress from trading? <laughs> That's a very good question and I, I will take breaks. I'll take month long breaks if, if something's not going well. You have to be at kind of your peak performance in order to trade because it's very difficult and mental, the mental aspect is probably 80% of trading. So um, I definitely will take breaks when I need to. And if that's taking a month or two off, I'll do it because I don't, I don't rely on that income to live. Outside your typical content, but how about some guidance on owning slash operating a small biz? It's a very good question and it's kind of broad. I always try to under promise and over deliver. So keep their expectations in check, but then when you actually deliver whatever it is you're contracted to do, you really like, in the words of Ryan Cohen, you delight the customer. People that you hire, make sure they have a good experience working for you, you know? Like you want people that like working for you because they're gonna do a better job, they're gonna be more reliable. So 
sometimes that comes with um, paying them more than maybe you'd really want to. But um, I think that just works out better in the end. Operate with integrity. That's about as simple as it gets. And then the other thing is um, make it super easy for people to pay you. As uh, you know, a millennial, I wanna make it so easy to pay someone. I wanna just go online, click a few buttons and pay someone. So as a business operator, make it super easy to get paid because that removes a lot of that friction. Because a lot of times as a small business owner, you can spend the majority of your time chasing after clients who still owe you money. So try to eliminate that as much as you can. Which is better, passive income or passive aggressive income? Yeah, I see you, Becca. Pet finances, I take all of the ad revenue from this channel and I spend it on my dogs. Beanie Babies, oh, that's from Rachel. Yes, I do think you should sell your Beanie Babies that are in your mom's basement. Financial planning for a young single income millennial couple. Well, I think the key is going to be to budget, make sure you know where your money's going every month and then live below your means. You wanna make sure that you're able to save money every single month and then once you have maybe an emergency fund in your savings account, you can invest in stocks, you can invest in real estate, things like that. But in order to get to that point, it's going to be making sacrifices kind of when you're young and especially on a single income to make sure that you're really living beneath your means so that you can actually put money away to save. And if you get a raise at your job, try to take that raise amount and just automatically put it in your savings account. Don't even allot it in your budget to spend because that leads to the creep, which is where you start spending more as your income goes up. And before you know it, you have nice things, a nice house, a nice car, but you're broke. So you don't want to get to that point. All right. I think that wraps up all the questions. Thank you to everyone who did ask a question. I try to get to as many as possible and make sure you're following me on Instagram. If you do want to take part in a Q and A in the future, that's where I'll be asking for questions. So thanks so much for watching. I will be back soon with a day trading challenge. Until then, bye.